Yes, I've got a big smile on my face. Maybe I won't have it on Monday. Fingers crossed we will. But I'm here to talk about an actual game of football. Man United back in Premier League action four weeks after we beat Arsenal. When we travelled to City on Sunday. It's the biggest test, of course. It is the hardest team we'll play all season. City away, I mean, they are on a different level. There's so many tactical questions that we need to answer. And I'm going to try and do it. In my starting 11 video, I'm going to take a look at the starting 11 of United, the starting 11 of City, because this is certainly one of those games where you can't just focus on how United line up. We have to think how we could stop City as well. That's what Ten Hag would have been planning. He's had two weeks to do this. And I'm going to run through all the questions about Casemiro, McTominay, Ronaldo, Rashford, Varane, Shaw. Matt. There's lots and lots of questions. I'll run through every single one of them in this video. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But look, what I'm going to do here is pull up the starting 11 that Manchester United played in our last game and also the starting 11 that City played in their last game. And we line them up against each other. United, of course, had that back five, which has become, well, Ten Hag's back five. Manasia and Delo is the full backs with Varane and Martinez and David Hay, of course, in goal. The midfield trio of McTominay, Eriksen and Bruno has been working really, really well. But there's a question to be asked about Casemiro for this game and his big game experience. And up front, we've had Rashford, Sancho and Anthony. But there's huge questions up there. Is Rashford going to be fit? Is Martial going to be fit? Is Ronaldo going to start? So many questions to start with. But look, the first place we have to start with is here. Which I'll be honest is probably, let's be completely real. It's where this game is. Probably going to be won or lost. Erling Haaland has been taking the piss out of the Premier League so far. It's supposed to be the hardest league in the world, and he's making it. He's making everyone look like children. He's an absolute freak of nature, an absolute Space Jam villain. But Martinez has played him before. Of course he has. And Martinez, 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 mate. Come on, please, Butcher. Do the damn business. That duel there is going to be fascinating. Martinez is going to try and ruffle Harden's feathers, but I don't think he's got any feathers. He's just pure Terminator. It's going to be a joke. And with the system that City play, there's going to be a lot of fluidity in the movement, but Harland will stay in effectively this area. He's just been operating as a lethal goal scorer. That's what's worked. That's what will work for City. And that's what Martinez and Varane together have got to try and stop. Because he's going to be playing there in between them. He's going to be able to drop in and out of the half spaces. It's going to be kind of hard for either of them to mark him without sort of getting dragged away and leaving space for Grealish, Foden or Mares or whoever plays on these two positions for City to expose. That's the big issue, right, with Haaland. Is United can't just focus on Haaland and think we're going to win it. Because if we focus on Haaland, we're going to leave gaps elsewhere. And there's so much quality in the City team. They'll just punish us. Now, I think... I think there's probably a question to be asked about left back. I personally feel that Madison will keep his spot. But is this a game where Eric Ten Hag will feel that because look, Madison has played well played pretty well this season, nothing overall. But if we're talking about one flaw of his game and it was a flaw of his game out in final, then it's it's something that he has to improve on here. He does get caught out a lot in these sorts of positions. And these balls in behind from De Bruyne. Those balls to Foden or Morris, who's ever, who's ever operating on that right wing. Manasseh does have the pace to recover. But would he want to play maybe a safer bet with Luke Shaw? What do you think? You let me know in the comments. I don't think he will. I think he'll stick with this back five that he has built trust with. I think trust is a big, big buzzword for Eric Ten Hag. And it's worked. Four Premier League wins in a row since the Brighton and Brentford games. It's definitely worked. The players have built that trust and they've worked with him. I think we'll stick with that back five going to be the biggest test of course it's Haaland but you can't ignore Foden or Mahrez down there or Grealish on the left hand side they've got so much quality I'll tell you what there's just as many questions about this area of the pitch because when you when you're playing up against a team that's got De Bruyne and Silva look if we're looking at this on paper there's going to be a lot of space there for whoever plays in midfield for Manchester United to operate but the fact of the matter is this City team's going to be so fluid so much movement constantly that, that will simply not be the case right so i think there's questions to be asked here about casemiro and about mctominay because casemiro is a man who comes with so much quality now i've heard uh, an idea as an option is, that people have said is that the idea of bruno is a false nine let's entertain this for a little quick second let's pull this up bruno is a false nine with casemiro and mctominay both playing there and ericsson moving further up the pitch 
Now, on paper, I can understand the logic behind it. But what that does is take our main man away from the position where we're going to need him the most. We're going to need him in these deeper line positions. For that reason alone, I don't think it's going to be possible for Manchester United to start Casemiro and McTominay together. Because if we do, we're just going to get penned in. We're going to end up booting the ball forward too quick, too fast. And City just going to keep attacking against us. We need Ericsson in this deeper role here to find the passes for Anthony, for Sancho, for whoever's running in behind. Because City will play a very high line. City will probably play a, high, a line around. I mean, I know they're back there. I know where they are on paper here in the formation. But when they're in possession, City will probably operate a line around about there. The balls from Ericsson in behind for Anthony or Sancho or whoever's playing there, crucial to Manchester United. It really will be crucial. And that's why I don't think that Casemiro will start this game as well. Again, from trust perspective, McTominay has earned his place in this starting eleven. Love him or lump him or whatever you want to call it. McTominay will start this game. Uh, but in terms of game management, that's where I think Casemiro can really come on for the last 30 and really help this United team with some maturity and leadership. Now, Bruno inside that role, I've already spoken about uh, Ericsson, right? He is, Ericsson is the architect of, every, of, of, of the win if we get it. He's going to be the, the, the composer for our board football. We need him, and that's why I mean we need him in a deeper line playmaker role. We can't afford to have Ericsson in the number 10 role. We need him deeper, influencing the play more. And that's why you can't play much Casemiro and together. I don't think so anyway. Not in this game. But look, Bruno Fernandes, this is where the questions are asked about what's going on up front. Because at this moment in time, right, we don't know whether Rashford's fit. We don't know whether Martial is fit, right? If Rashford is fit, I think Rashford starts. If Rashford doesn't start, and Martial doesn't start, then I think Eric Ten Hag will entertain the idea of Bruno as that false nine. I think like, he's played it before, and he didn't play it particularly well. I think if he did play it this time, he'd play it far, far better. I don't know what to predict. It's kind of hard to predict this part because we don't know. And I don't think Eric Ten Hag will let anybody know in his press conference tomorrow. I think we're just going to have to guess. Given that Rashford didn't play, didn't train, sorry, yesterday, given that Martial didn't train yesterday, I think the big question up front revolves around this man and whether or not Cristiano Ronaldo starts for Manchester United against City on Sunday. You let me know what you think in the comments below. But one thing I don't think United will operate in this game against City is a high press, right? I don't really expect Manchester United, when City are in possession, to be running up here trying to win the ball high up the pitch. Fact of the matter is City are just too damn good. If we do that, Cancelo, anybody will find a... Will find a look, say if we were to do this, everyone's pressing up here, everyone's going, Bruno's running in too, trying to squeeze it out. They'll find a little sneaky ball through to De Bruyne and look at all the space that De Bruyne would have here. And it's like the worst position possible. I don't think United will do that. It wouldn't be the smart play. That's what, that's what I'm saying about this City game. As much as we want United to line up as good as United can line up, we have to think about City in this game. You'd be foolish not to. Foolish. Who? You would be. We can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City just yet. And that's why I don't think we'll play the high press up here. I think it'll probably be a little bit deeper. We'll try and win the ball back here. And in that sense... Ronaldo could start. But there are misgivings for Ronaldo. There absolutely are misgivings. He's just, he's not the Ronaldo that we know. He really isn't. But I don't particularly think he'll play Bruno at false nine. I think he'll want Bruno and Eriksen to link up. And I think whoever it's going to be, whether it's Ronaldo, whether it's Rashford, whether it's Martial, or maybe even Elanga. If you're looking at games that um, Eric Ten Hag has played, it was a Liverpool game where he started Elanga. I think he played Rashford through the middle. Uh, and we won that game. And also the next game against Southampton away, Elanga started that. And we won that game too. I don't think Elanga's incredibly effective. But in terms of mobility and dynamism, Elanga would offer a lot more than Cristiano Ronaldo would. I don't think Elanga would start through the middle though. I really don't know. This front three is very, very hard to pick and choose because we don't know who's going to be fit. There's two players that we know who are going to be fit and who are going to start. And I'm really, really excited to see what Anthony brings to this game. Because look, I tell you what, if you're looking at danger men for City, I'm going to highlight these three. They're, the, they're, in my opinion, they are the difference makers. 
I mean, the rest of them are really fucking good anyway. But Haaland, De Bruyne and Cancelo, they're the three biggest threats, I would argue. Cancelo just, I mean, he's incredible, really. He really, really, what a signing that's been for City. Arseholes. But Anthony, in this sort of game, this is a player we've missed massively. Anthony is a match winner. Anthony is a player who can create magic out of nowhere with the ball at his feet. And we're going to need that. Uh, I would say we've had a massive uh, air of predictability about our attacks. I'd say Jaden Sancho's got that air of unpredictability too. And he's been training for two weeks. He's missed the international break. He'll be ready for this game as well. And Sancho and Anthony offer something. Not only have we got their pace on the counter-attack, but that like if you compare the pace on the counter-attack we've had previously, like we would have had Rashford and Lingard in these two positions. And now we've got Sancho and, and Anthony, two actual genuinely top-level footballers who can dribble past players Create that space by beating his man. That's what we need in these games because you can't just rely on balls over the top, on runs in behind. You need you need your individuals to be able to pull out moments of magic. Now, in my opinion, looking at it, I can't decide. I really, if Rashford's fit, and I'm hoping that he is, considering he's just had like a full two week international break, and that Eric Ten Hag is keeping him behind closed doors. I hope Rashford's fit to start because I think that's a better front three. And I believe that Ronaldo, if we're looking at effectiveness of Ronaldo, there's more chance that Ronaldo affects this game with a strong 30-minute cameo towards the end than he does from the start. That's my opinion. You might disagree on that. And I think with Casemiro, I think the exact same. I don't think that both, either of them will start. This is probably what I'm going to go for as my starting eleven if Rashford is fit. The back five, you know the back five. I don't think, I think you could have a question there about Shaw, but I, don't, I think he's going to stick with what he trusts. Same in midfield. I think he's going to stick with what he trusts. Eric Ten Hag, has, he's been let down by the players that he didn't trust, that he thought he trusted in the first two games. Casemiro, I think, is a question you could, an argument you could have, but Matomane is going to keep his place. I want to see Casemiro coming on around 60 minutes, depending on what the game, how the game is flowing. This City team, look at them, man. If you concentrate on Haaland, you ignore Foden. If Foden's not on the pitch, you look, have to look at Mahrez. What about Grealish on the left-hand side? A midfield three of Rodri, De Bruyne and Silva is pretty much set. They'll start. And a back five, you don't really know who the back five is going to be. John Stone, Sancho's got to be thinking, yeah, okay, well, we can go there. Maybe you're not going to get a Kanji starting there. You're going to get Diaz. They're fucking good. We are getting there. But this game, that team, who would you put in your starting 11? You let me know in the comments below. Eric Ten is going to have his pre-match press conference tomorrow. As I said, tactically, I don't think we'll be operating on a high press. I think we're going to be putting that a little bit lower, conserving our energy and going for the counter-attacks. And the man who's going to make those counter-attacks happen, Christian Eriksen. If we win this game, it's going to largely be down to him. That's what I think. You can let me know what you think in the comments below on the starting 11. Who would you put in? Ronaldo, Casemiro, Shaw left back. Questions, questions, questions. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. But football's back on Sunday in City away. The big one. It is a big one.